This is our, uh, really our, I think our 10th Jackson Society dinner. It has grown tremendously. And I just cannot thank everyone enough because all of you, the sum total of all of you, have really made this center, which started off very simply in December 14, 2000, when a meeting among Carl Kappa, Betty Lene, Tom Carver from the Gebby Foundation, myself, and we watched a movie, which you may have all seen here, about Robert Jackson at Nuremberg, and thinking a way outside the box that that's amazing. There he is the uh, individual from Jamestown, New York, who was delivering the opening statement at the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg. And he's from here. And look at the defendants. Look at those folks who are on the dock over here. Look at the folks who are observed that. Look at the folks that he's impacted. He's from Jamestown. We ought to pause, reflect, and certainly we have no idea of all that had, would occur over the following 10 years. And as Joe Zanetta pointed out, all of you have been part of that, but certainly Carl, Betty, Chuck Hall, and all of the Gibby Foundation board members, uh, Dan Brad, and it could go on and on. And on October 7th, thank you, Mark Russell, we will all be together to spend a lot of time reflecting on that. So it's just a thrill that we have the largest number of members of the Jackson Society ever. We have the largest crowd here ever. I'm not sure what we do next year uh, if we get bigger because it's just an, an unbelievable thing. I do want to call out and pay attention and uh, just to a couple folks who are here this week at Chautauqua, making this week at Chautauqua Institution a special week. First one is in the front row, 95 years old, Ken Heckler. Ken Heckler was an individual as a military combat historian, had the opportunity to interview many of those folks that are depicted on Ray D'Addario's pictures here. This is Gary, Kaido, Yodel, Ribbentrop, and others. He had a chance to interview them as part of a military combat history project, which subsequently is information which has been used by all of us. In addition, he was Harry Truman's speechwriter. He was a nine-term congressman. He was the only congressman, the only congressman, to march with Martin Luther King at Selma, Alabama. An incredible act of service. <laughs> An advocate extraordinaire. He was a four-time Secretary of State of West Virginia, and continues to this day to be an activist with regards to uh, strip mining and the safety of coal miners in West Virginia. The pause is that in May of this year, the John F. Kennedy Library uh, gave a, an award to an individual who wrote an essay. He was, one, he was the one selected out of 1,853 papers. And he wrote the essay on an individual named Ken Heckler, and who not only is an advocate, extraordinary advocate, but one of those hellraisers that you just love to be around. Uh, and so he got the award. Ken was in Boston with the individual who got the award. He was covered on C-SPAN. And Carolyn Kennedy was one of the people who gave an award and wrote an incredible introduction in the profile of courage book. Which, which I'm going to paraphrase since I can't immediately find it, is the fact that of all the people who were mentioned in this Profile of Courage books, Ken Heckler continues to demonstrate that on a daily basis. To Ken Heckler, we say thank you for coming to Chautauqua this week. He's been a tremendous impact. Ken Heckler is here. Also, Eli Rosenbaum, who is the director of the Office of Special Investigations, the foremost, which is assigned to track down Nazis who illegally came into the country for prosecution and ultimately extradition, and who was involved most recently in the extradition of Don, John Damianic, 
And so Eli is here this week. Eli is soon to go into Ber to Berlin to be part of the trial, which is the trial, probably the last trial against a, uh, a Nazi uh, who was part of the World War II and, and the Holocaust. So to Eli and his wife, Cynthia, thank you for coming. I know he was here earlier, but Stefan Sandelin, who is the, uh, uh, from the Stoffa, is that here? Oh, anyways, let's give Stefan a hand. He was here. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's so many individuals here uh, uh, inevitably going to get into trouble by calling them out. But Mark Russell, if you would please stand, because I really want to say thank you to Mark. We also have, uh, they stood, but I just want to call them out, our Jackson Center Board Directors. Uh, Ebert Prettyman, Jr., who was Jackson's last law clerk, Think Brown versus Board of Education, thinks these intimately involved, uh, he was managing part of Hogan and Hartson, and at one point had as a young associate a guy named John Roberts, who I think has done pretty well since then. <laughs> And I'm rooting for the fact that uh, Barry Prettyman and John Roberts will be reunited at the Jackson Center <laughs> in the not too distant future. So, uh, to Barry Prettyman, we say thank you for coming. John Anderson is here. We have Jeanette Carlson, David Crane, who I'm going to specifically pause for a second because it's David who, through his connections with the, uh, as the chief American prosecutor at the International Military Trial at Sierra Leone, is responsible for the international law dialogues of which we've enjoyed. The, the our fourth one is coming. That is unique. It is singularly unique to our uh, to all the prosecutors, and it happens here at Chautauqua because of David Crane. And you need to know a little bit of a historical fact. Robert Jackson was the chief American prosecutor at the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg. David Crane was the chief American prosecutor at the International Military Tribunal at Sierra Leone. If you notice that title, David Crane is only the second guy to have that title. So in the sequence of life, there's Robert Jackson and David Crane. And thank you, David, for coming. <laughs> also here as board members, Randy Sweeney from the Stock Region Community Foundation, Bruce Janowski, Jamestown Container, John Jackson, Chautauqua, and an attorney extraordinaire, and I obviously have a great invocation talking about the errors of my Sea Trek Tigers. <laughs> Doug Neckers, who will, uh, Dr. Doug Neckers, who's been part of a great program. In fact, he was a facilitator of the program this week entitled 1940, the year before, which we've been uh, having the great, uh, great crowds and great participation this week at Chautauqua and who also isn't shy about interrupting me. <laughs> Joe Zanetta from California, as many of you know, a local, locally bred an attorney from the area who said, go west, young man, and did so. And we're just glad that he's coming back east, at least for the time being, now and then. So Joe, thank you. Tom Hagen from Erie. Tom has joined the board. And Tom, we thank you for all of your interest and participation. And the second most famous judge from Frewsburg, uh, we're just glad to have my board, Willard Cash, Judge. <laughs> <laughs>